In the debate over tax policy, no question generates more vigorous political debate than who pays. However, the underlying source of the political debate seems to lie in the assumption that the answer to the question who pays is really more nuanced than what an initial mechanical response might suggest. Indeed, many political and economic policy analysts agree that often the meaningful answer requires examining the effects of taxes rather than just the legal aspects of the policy. Even many people who are not trained policy analysts appear to intuitively understand that the important question that should be answered is, who really pays? To unravel the answer to the question, who really pays Texas taxes, we will investigate two subsidiary questions. First, does it matter who the government imposes the tax on? And second, how is the tax burden in Texas distributed? To answer the first question, let's begin by distinguishing two fundamental concepts, statutory incidence versus economic incidence. The statutory incidence, or legal liability of a tax, falls on the entity that is legally responsible for remitting the tax revenues to the taxing jurisdiction, that is, paying the tax to government. The economic incidence, or the economic burden of the tax, falls on the entity or entities that incurs the economic cost as a result of the tax. The point of distinguishing these two concepts is to suggest that it may be possible, in certain circumstances, for the economic burden of the tax to be shifted away from the entity who bears the legal liability of the tax. This phenomenon is known as tax shifting. To understand the phenomenon of tax shifting, as it is sometimes called, we will need to conduct some economic analysis. But one doesn't need a degree in economics to appreciate the intuition behind tax shifting. For example, clearly the statutory incidence of the general sales tax in Texas falls on the retailer. The state government imposes the legal liability of the sales tax on retailers largely for the sake of administrative efficiency. The prospects of the state collecting sales tax revenue from consumers on every retail transaction subject to the sales tax is untenable. Clearly, retailers bear the legal responsibility of remitting sales tax revenues to the state. But if I was to say to you, come on, who really pays the sales tax? You would likely answer, like most Texans do, consumers pay the tax. Unwittingly, your intuition has led you to make the same distinction economists make between statutory and economic incidents. Like many Texans, you probably assume that consumers bear the economic burden of the sales tax, even though they are not legally liable to remit the tax to government. It remains to be seen whether your intuition is supported by economic analysis.